Ladies and gentlemen, it's day 26. Can you believe that? We have four days left together in the 30-day final challenge. I cannot believe it. I um, sort of light at the end of the tunnel here, having sort of um, feeling a little bit enlightened, I guess, uh, as to what I have accomplished. I have not purchased any records. I've gotten rid of more records than I received in trades. Um, so I've actually made more room in my collection in the 30 days. And I've had a lot of time to really think about some just really awesome albums I've had, talked about them, which I probably wouldn't talk about because uh, I'd be doing new stuff. But um, the next couple of days are going to be pretty awesome. And I, and I say that because there's some cool stuff going on. So um, I will probably post something probably tomorrow, um, you know, kind of in relation to the vinyl community, but uh, a little bit, uh, you know, more so uh, uh, music related so uh, definitely something cool going on today so I uh, day 25 right there Grateful Dead self-titled 1967 uh, today I'm going to talk about an album that I've talked about before a long time ago and you know I didn't get too many views on it I mean this is probably like when I first kind of started this whole thing and um, so I wanted to kind of talk about that album again and kind of spotlight it, and, and it fits very well into the 30-day challenge. Uh, Listen to it this morning. Oh, and by the way, so my inbox was like lit up this morning with comments, and I'm like looking through, and it's like, and uh, Sam's folk faves. So um, yeah, don't leave your account logged in on your computer because your wife may go and post a video on your channel. So uh, that's all right. I still love her. So she. Uh, that's so funny. <laughs> I um, <laughs> I actually uh, she told me that she like made her own channel. She's like, oh, I made my own channel, and uh, I had just subscribed to her the other day. And then the next thing I know, when I woke up this morning, everybody was commenting. So thanks for everybody for checking her out. And uh, I I mean I don't know I don't know where the channel is gonna go, but uh, I'm sure she she has records to talk about. So. Um, she had kind of mentioned stuff that I probably wouldn't mention that often, so which you know, hey, that's what we're here for. Uh, so again, we're gonna talk today about this album, John Mayall, The Blues Breakers with Eric Clapton. This is just a totally awesome album. Uh, I'll get personal on this one because this is, uh, you know, definitely holds a uh, a really awesome place in my collection. So kind of as the story goes. Um, I would say this was probably around maybe 2002 to 2003, maybe even like 2001, I can't remember. Um, but I I had just, I was like hanging out with one of my friends and we, uh, you know, when I, where I was, when I was growing up, you know, really the only thing you could do is there was like a restaurant that was like an all night restaurant and of course Walmart. And it was kind of like one of those things, it was like, you know, what do you do at, you know, 11 o'clock at night or, you know, 1 o'clock in the morning, I don't remember what the heck it was, but, you know, you go to Walmart. And at the time, and uh, it, it's really funny because I, I mean, we can get into a lot of, a lot of talk about, you know, big corporations and whatnot, I'm not going to go into it. Um, you know, I think we are our kind of like-minded uh, with shopping at indie record stores, and um, you know, there's definitely an importance on buying local and buying, um, you know, local businesses, supporting local businesses. Um, you know, I, I guess in a way, I'm kind of, um, in a way, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of spoiled because a lot of that is living in the city. Um, you know, there's not really a Walmart around here. I mean, there is one, but it's like 15 miles away, basically, or, you know, like a 20 minute, 25 minute drive or anything like that. So, um, and there may be one closer, but I just don't know. But yeah, for the, yeah never mind. It's, it's, yeah, that's what it is. Um, but I've kind of like, I only go to Walmart maybe once or twice a year. I've really, um, I've really kind of, you know, I used to go there all the time. It was like, oh, Walmart, you know, they have, you know, the best prices and things like that. But, uh, you know, it's kind of one of those things where it's not the best, you know what I mean? It's it's not good for local economies. It's not good for, you know, they kind of come in, they have, 
you know, local businesses, their prices are a little bit high because they have to be, you know what I mean? They, they're not, you know, they're not at the top of the food chain, so they got to do what they have to do. So it's just kind of like one of those things that, you know, I never go there anymore. And, and it's funny because I was, the one time I was in there, it's probably in there about maybe uh, three months ago or so, maybe even more than that. I don't even know at this point, you know, time is, time has become a loop. Um, but there, um, I needed some head, like some headphones, so I was in there, and uh, I went into like where their CDs are, and it was the most paltry selection that I've ever seen in my entire life, and I was kind of blown away that I actually got this CD at Walmart, and like I said, it's probably like 2000, 2002, 2003, something like that, and I'm just kind of going through the CDs, and I really started like, at that point, that's really when I started listening to like old music, I mean, I was... Prior to that, I was really listening to a lot of new punk music and things like that, but I was kind of seeking for, um, kind of as I talked before, I've always kind of reached out to the older music I've really been drawn in by, you know, 60s music and sort of the raw, organic kind of sounds that were created. Like, it's not, it's, you know, it's, it's the sound you get when you plug your guitar into an amplifier. It's the sound you get, you know, that what, drown, what drums sound like and everything like that. Um, you know, it's it's the organic where, you know, the, the album, or I'm sorry, the album just sounds like, you know, the instruments are really, you know, breathing, you know what I mean? Like, they're really living creatures. It's not electronic, there's not any type of synthesizers, no manufactured sound or anything like that. So we could go on and on about that. I can talk about that all day, believe me. And if you want to, maybe we will someday. Um, but this album, to me, just, um, I, I sort of had just kind of really take it started taking a serious look at guitar um, I played guitar but I just sort of like um, I developed this playing style that I just <laughs> um, again this is something else that we could talk about for a long time I um, I really didn't know I didn't have a guitar tune or anything like that when I first started playing guitar so um, I just sort of like tuned it to an open tuning and then I would just sort of play that way and I played you know like punk style music and things like that and it's really weird because that really helped me out you understand you know the breakdown of the instrument as far as with you know thirds fifths and sevenths and whatnot um again another conversation that we could have for days but um and it really helped you know playing slide guitar and things like that you know and, and playing in alternative tunings where you kind of look at something different than just the standard tuning um but this album really kind of spoke to me because I really kind of thought, you know what, I need to step up my game. I really need to learn how to play this thing. So, you know, that day I kind of went out, and the guitar that I had was just kind of like a very, you know, well, this was soon after, you know, this was soon after, maybe months after kind of listening to this album that that kind of became a uh, revelation to me. But um, I, I went out, and I said, you know what, I'm going to learn how to play the guitar, but what am I going to do? I'm going to get a good guitar, and I'm going to learn how to play it. So basically, Eric Clapton, of course, at this point is playing a Les Paul. I knew so much about this album. I used to just, you know, read all the production notes and whatnot. Um, of course, it has uh, uh, John McVie, later the the Mac part of Fleetwood Mac. Um, but I just sort of like read about the Les Paul sound, and I said, you know, what? that's kind of what I want to go for. So of course, that's what I ended up getting. Um, but this is just an awesome album. Just it's. It just really shows Eric Clapton's style is really just, and, and it's funny because, you know, of course the name of the band after this would be Cream, but um, he has a really creamy tone with the with the Les Paul, which is just the sound I love. Um, you know, I love Jimmy Page's stuff, Mike Bloomfield. Um, you know, I, I think those are just huge, you know, less, you know, Les Paul guitar players. I mean, Jimi Hendrix is more of like, you know, he's plays a Stratocaster. Stratocaster is just the most, you know, you know, it's, it's a... Uh, you can do it's a versatile instrument, I guess. So it's, you can do all kinds of things with it. But the Les Paul, it's a, it's a very focused tone that you you achieve. So um, pretty much a little bit of backstory on this because this album this is already like nine minutes here, and I, I appreciate you bearing with me because this is a good one. Um, album kind of came out um, and right after you know after Eric Clapton had left the Yardbirds because they were becoming a little bit too too pop, as he would say. Uh, so he joined John May on the Blues Breakers. This is just a one-off album with Eric Clapton. Uh, you know, next would be Peter Green. Um, just John Mayle is just a huge stable for uh, you know a lot of musicians. Larry the Mole Taylor from Canned Heat would later join after kind of Canned Heat dissolved for uh, for the most part. I mean, they were still around, but for the the original lineup, I guess. Um, and of course, uh, John McVie and Huey Flint. So just 
just an awesome album. I love all your love, just <clears throat> the way that it plays. Um, I learned how to play that on guitar, which was just I kind of note for note what uh, what Eric Clapton does, and it's really amazing the, what exactly how he achieves that sound. Um, uh, Hideaway, which is a Freddie King song, uh, Little Girl, Another Man, just really cool, kind of like harmonica, you know. It just the album to me just it's uh, it's another world. It's it's another world, but yet I can listen to it and it's very very familiar. Um, Double Cross in Time, just just a great they stretch out it's it's three minutes long but it just seems like it's like five minutes or so uh what i say of course the ray charles um could possibly be one of the kind of the sour notes on this album the drum solo is just kind of um you know in the time i'm sure that it seemed pretty cool but it's you know in a way it really didn't seem to be uh you know that fantastic but um uh key to love parchment farm uh, have you heard and uh Rambling on my mind, stepping out, and it ain't right. I mean, this just this album to me just was huge. Just really got me influenced in the blues. This is actually kind of where it started for me, and then I sort of, you know, oh Freddie King, you know, and, and it's it's kind of funny because Teddy posted that "How did I get here?" video, and I feel the exact same way. Just it, <laughs> the, what he was saying was just like I was mouthing the same words as he was saying them. It just this album really took me in all kinds of different directions and. Uh, really got an appreciation for older blues music and all that. Just fantastic. So, um, thanks for sticking with me. I know this is a long one, but again, four days left. This the series is coming to an end. So, um, but I got some kind of some cool stuff going on in the next couple of days. So I'll fill you in as those uh, come down the pike. So we'll see you tomorrow.